Well, the only thing that's consistent about the Oklahoma weather is its inconsistency. So, Paul, what, when the weather changes rapidly like this in the uh, this time of year, what does that mean for Oklahoma cattle producers? Yeah, you know, Oklahoma's weather is just really variable this time of year. And, you know, it just seems like Groundhog Day again, you know, with, with the storms that we've had going through, you know, this fall and, and uh, on through the winter, uh, broken up by some pretty nice weather. So um, when we've got, an, you know, some really nice days going in a row and cows start losing their acclimation to the cold winter and, um, when we've got cows like the ones behind us here that are in good body condition with good thick winter hair coats, it's not going to be as, as stressful on them when we uh, look at their lower critical temperature. It's going to be down in the 20s. Uh, with the wind chill we're expecting this weekend, it's going to, you know, you know, that lower critical temperature and that wind chill will be down below that. But a cow in this kind of condition will be able to weather that fairly well. It's those thin cows uh, that will really be at more risk. Um, a cow in a good body condition with a good thick winter hair coat will have lower critical temperature of about 32. A thinner cow with less internal uh, insulation, it's going to be around 40. Uh, the other thing to be concerned about will be newborn calves. And when we have a storm front move through, we're going to have a lot of calves be born. So with those newborn calves that are going to be born, you know, when it's, you know, not just a weather event like this, but just in, you know, weather that's going to be really low temperatures, what are some things that producers can keep in mind so they don't lose any of those calves? These baby calves, newborns have very thin skin. You know, they're born with brown adipose tissue that they use for energy until they get up and suckle. And when they start shivering, they can burn through that brown adipose tissue really quickly. And whenever they lose that, that's when those calves will starve to death very rapidly. So you need to, you know, really watch, uh, you know, cows that are expecting. And if that calf doesn't get up and suckle or if he's born out exposed into the elements you need to get him moved in to shelter make sure he gets up and suckles and if you find a calf that's you know having hypothermia or low body temperatures you need to get him in get him into the pickup you know and if it's really serious you know bring him into the house and put him in the bathtub in some hot water and you know i always you know tell producers if you have kids or grandkids, you make sure they get in there with that calf and see it in the in that bathtub in your house because they'll always remember it. So, in regards like with these when these events come along, how do they impact uh, an animal's you know a, a cow's food and water intake? So, in general, when we get below that lower critical temperature and start getting into cold stress, cows will actually increase consumption to increase their basal meta metabolic rates um, and increase the heat of fermentation. And, but what happens when we have an acute storm like this where it really blows in quickly, uh, they actually will have about 50% cut in, in uh, forage intake. Their grazing behavior changes, their water intake changes. So, you know, along with increasing their uh, requirements for maintenance by, you know, with a storm like this, if we get down to wind chills of down to around three, you know, we're looking at about a 30% to 40% increase in nutrient requirements. You know, having some real good high quality hay close to a shelter area, you just having windbreaks available, or, you know, we always cuss those cedar trees and we talk about how do we eradicate them or burn to get rid of them, but you know, this is the event where having a good, you know, group of cedar trees to break the wind for them cows to get behind will really pay some benefits. Well, thanks, Paul. Paul Beck, Extension uh, Beef Cattle Specialist here at Oklahoma State University.